Well, you came back from uh, Spain and you look like you're in pretty good shape. Yeah. There's been a lot of talk about the shooting aspect of it over there. Could you perhaps go through what is in your thought, your mind, your thought process about telling everybody, don't worry about the shooting, it's going to be there. Oh, Are you ready to go for this season? Oh, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Um, I try to take every negative um, aspect of my life and try to make it a positive. It was To me, it was probably a good reason why I catch a rhythm with that ball. Um, I tried every night to go out there and shoot it, but just didn't go down, just part of basketball. And um, I get to come here, stay with a solid team. Um, I'll be able to shoot um, 20, 25 shots. Um, a night if I choose if I choose to so within them 20 shots I think I should be able to find a little rhythm so I'm not worried about that hey Derek right down the middle um, the question was asked to you a year ago before the second injury can you understand why there are a lot of Bulls fans they don't doubt your confidence they don't doubt your resolve and yeah. focus just doubt whether or not you can stay in one piece oh yeah hey, um with, with these two type of injuries, of, of course, that, that question, and um, that, that's just going to come up. Uh, I'm not worried about that. I don't care about when people ask me the question. Um, I know that it's always going to be there. I'm always going to have to answer this question for the rest of my career, so I'm not worried about that. So, um, But for the Bulls fans, I can sit here and say a million times that I'll be fine, but I think the only way to answer all the um, critics and everyone um, asking about me is to actually be on the court and actually plan. Ed, what's your confidence level right now, the trust in your knee, and especially this time compared to last year as well? I know they're different injuries, but... Um, my my confidence for um in my body period is is very high. I know all the work that I put into the off season and getting back into the shape that I'm in right now. So I'm not worried about that. I haven't been worried about it. the question. Didn't come up the entire time I was in camp in Vegas. It didn't come up none while I was overseas. So um, it, it, I never got wind of it like that. I never really thought about it or went deep into it. So um, this is a, a new journey for me, and I'm um, just trying to take it all in. Derek, with some of your new teammates in, with, you know, with Powell and with all these different guys that can maybe shoot a little bit better, where, where do you think you're going to fit in as far as just wanting to attack more? You know what I mean? Like every – are there going to be room for you to attack a lot more is what I'm saying? Um, I, I think so. Uh, with, with the – with the rules of the NBA, you have to be in the, that lane three seconds, and then you have to be out. I think that I'm pretty fast, and I think that I'm good enough to get in the lane, no matter who's guarding me. As far as spacing, I think the culture staff and tips um, is already getting um, everything together offensively. Um, but our biggest thing is defense. If we could defensively stick and guard teams the entire game, I think offensively we should be pretty good. Derek, on Team USA, you got a chance to play with Anthony Davis, another Chicago guy. Um, yeah. What's your impression of him as a player? And, like, were you impressed with just how good he is and how he can do everything? He's a great player. Um, and I love his drive. His drive to want to be great, it kind of push you if you're around him. Um, he rubs off on people, and especially if they have a young team, the way that he works, not on the court but off the court too, like in the training room, the weight room, he does a great job of taking care of his body. So, um, just being around him, talking to him a little bit more, talking to his family, um, it, he, he's heading in the right direction. Derek, with the, with the off-season moves that, that management made, do you think you almost have to carry less of an offensive burden? Oh, yeah, for, um, for sure. With the threats that we have, I'm trying to make the game as, um, as simple as possible. I'm not going to try to overuse myself. I think that... Um, just learn the game, being a student of the game, um, I think is actually going to help me become a, a better player um, with learning the offensive sets, uh, learning the defensive sets, and just learning um, time management, knowing when to score, knowing when to get people involved. Derek, with all the moves that were made in the offseason, do you feel like you come back to a much better team, even with the guys who played in your absence last year improving? Oh, yeah, for sure. But it's no disrespect to my old teammates. But I think the team that we have right now, um, talent-wise, is a much stronger team than we had last year. 
Uh, I think guys are, are focused. I'm not saying that the guys last year weren't focused, but this year um, coming here, practicing this facility, just it, it feels like a new team. So uh, we really got to take advantage of every situation that we have, opportunity that we have, and it seems like guys are doing that. You mentioned that you've gotten used to answering the injury question. Yeah. The last two years for you, what has it taught you about the business of basketball and the things that may get questioned and all the things that come along with not just hooping but on the outside of it as well? Um, you know, when you're not on the court, um, as far as um, business-wise, um, you're where when you when you play basketball and you're a basketball player everything comes from you actually playing so um when you're not on the court um you kind of get i won't say for forgotten but um players get other players get seen um have opportunities for other players to get seen and that happens and that came out i don't get mad at it or anything um i just know my opportunity is going to come when i get on the court but you, you try to venture off into other investments, certain things like that. But I don't need to talk about it right now. <laughs> With some stuff down the line that I'm working on. How did you sell the Bulls to Powell, and what do you look forward to most in playing with him? You know, with Powell, I think that he had in his mind that he really wanted to come here, or we were the first team that he was um, looking to um, looking to go to and doing free agency right away. Just by me just talking to him, I think that's what I felt. Um, he felt like he wanted to come here. Um, after I got off the phone with him, he said that he had decided, but he was with his family. And um, when he decided to come here, um, it was kind of a, a relief knowing that um, a player like um, Powell, um, the way that he, he, he got a double team in some games, just a different um, dimension on our team. Like we had Taj, but when you add someone like Powell, um, it, it kind of it for sure is going to make you a better team. And um, I thank the Bulls for that because it's going to be a lot of a lot of games where um, I'm not I'm not going to have to do so um, like a lot to really win a game. Derek, I know you're all about winning, and that's very important to you over here to the left. Oh, I can't even see you. Right. The... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, hey, hey, Derek, I know you're all about winning, and that's really important to you. Obviously, you added a lot of uh, yeah. talent to the team this year. Now, Cleveland added Kevin Love, yes. so LeBron's got maybe a big three again. Yes. How important is it, you think, maybe this year – that you've guys got to kind of take that step and beat out Cleveland this year because as those guys get more used to each other, it might be tougher down the line just like it was in Miami. You know, people always bring up Cleveland, but it's a lot of other teams in the in the East that's rebuilding but have good teams. And a lot of people overlook them teams, but um, I think the East has gotten better. Uh, we got better players. I think everybody's... Um, heading in the right direction as far as getting the right players on their team and players that they want on their team. And um, I think the NBA is better because um, guys are working harder. Um, you look at a lot of guys, like with the social media stuff, a lot of guys be on different guys' pages, and it, it, that could push you seeing someone work out a certain way. So I think the NBA is um, overall is going to be exciting, and I hope everybody just stay tuned into it. Derek, in, in what ways do you see you and Powell feeding off each other during games? I see um, I, I automatically go to the fourth quarter where he got the ball and I'm out on the perimeter and I'm just waiting to get a set shot. Other than that, let him work. You got Joaquin Motaj on the other side cleaning up everything else and you got two other shooters on the floor with with um, me, him, and um, me, Joe, and Powell. So I just see him in the post. Um, I'm waiting for a jump shot, and you pick your poison. Derek, after, I mean, just being out for so long, for two years, most of it, do you come back in and be more, are you vocal right away? I mean, how do you, how do you want to be a leader, I guess? No, I, before um, I went out for the Vegas, um, the, the, the camp, I, I mean, right after I made the team and knew that I was going to Spain, I said that I wanted to be more vocal, but that opportunity didn't come in the way that I wanted to do, um, to come. Um, I waited, and we kind of didn't need it. We was winning every game by 20, 25 points, so um, it wasn't no need for it. So coming here, um, I think that I have that opportunity again where it's fresh. 
Um, I'm able to be around the guys a lot more. Uh, we're, we're able to talk a lot more. So um, I think that, that leadership role will come now. You're not playing. When you're not playing, there's only so much you can say. Um, as a player, like you're not out there. So it's kind of like shut up and just let us play. Derek, there have been people in the national media back here, back row, that have thought that this team, because of health concerns, only has X amount of years left, that the window yeah. may be closing. I assume you disagree with that. What does that make you think? This is my first time hearing about it. Um, I don't try to look into it. I try not. I try my hardest to stay away from it. But um, we know uh, we have an opportunity ahead of us. Um, it may not be this year. It may not be the next year or whatever. But I know that we have one. I know I'm going to win the championship soon. So I'm not worried about that. Hey, Derek, right down the middle again. It's right down the middle. Uh, I'm sure a lot of us watched you in Spain probably cringed when you missed a lot of outside shots. Yeah. Is that the one element that's missing now? Or is there is there something else that where it's going to develop over time for you to get? You know, it's just time. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that my shot is going to be fixed right when the season starts. Like, I'm still going to shoot the shots that I normally get. If you leave me open and the game is telling me to shoot, I'm going to shoot. Um, it's just that um, missing two years, knocking the rust off, learning how to shoot off the dribble, learning how to shoot off the catch and shoot. Like if you was a basketball player or you played on um, played on this level, you will know. But it's so many, so many stages that you have to go through to get back to. Um, I had to go through to get back to where I am right now, and um, just trying to stay positive, put all um, put all my workouts and all my um, shooting the, like workouts really behind me so that I can stay focused on the future and know that um, I'm back with the Bulls now and we have a bright future. Hey, Derek, over here to the right. What was the biggest lesson that you learned then, kind of playing off that answer and question? What was the biggest lesson that you learned in the last two years? Having patience. Like, patience is, is the key with everything. I think everything in my life right now as far as me being on the court and um, my business off the court. On the court, you know, um, just can't force it. I think last time I came back with my injury, um, my last injury, I forced it a little bit. And um, just learning from my last injury this time around, just having patience. Like, I know it's going to be a grind, but I can't get it all back in one day. Uh, Derek, do you feel pressure to get back to being that pre-injury level player? And if so um, how close do you have to be to that player for this team to be a championship contender? Um, no, I don't, I don't feel pressured um, to be that player. Um, it's just in me. <laughs> I can't. I, it's just in me. I, it's just the way that I play, the way that I see the game, the way that I move. Um, I don't try to mimic my game after anyone. It's just the way that I play. And um, what was the second? To win a title. Um, we, this is the beginning of, of training camp now. We really don't know how good this team is or how far we can go right now. We, we didn't start camp yet, but we know that as far as on um, a whole, we have one goal and everybody's trying to um, er, everybody's trying to get on the same wagon so that we could ride through through that finish line the same same time. Hey, Derek, when you were out the last two years, uh, the complexion of the offense changed a little bit. It ran more through Joe Kim Noah as a facilitator. How do you think that can help you with another the guy who can pass the ball on the floor with Poway and Noah, both at the high post now? You know, with Joe, with the way that he's been passing and the way that he's been learning the game, I think that he fully understands the NBA game now. And it, with the way that he passed, it's just going to make everybody's job simple. Um, me being the point guard, I'm going to get a lot of catch and shoot pat, um, shots because um, the way that he's finding people, I'm going to have a lot of layups, the way that how fast I am and how people play me. I could go back door for a lot of easy baskets. So uh, we got a lot of threats on this team. We just can't overthink everything. The Eastern Conference is different than it was last year when you were out. Uh, Kevin Durant spoke about LeBron James going back to Cleveland and yeah. his thoughts on it. Your thoughts on not only that team, but this offseason and him going back to Cleveland as well? 
um, you know, that team is is definitely is going to be they're going to be um, it's going to be a challenge. You, there's no other way you could put, um, put that. But as far as him going back, um, you can't get mad at a person's decision. Um, he made you got to throw in the factors of family. You got to throw in the factors of money, of course. It's a business. And you want to be back home. You can't get mad at someone that wanted to be back home. So I could respect that. And that's pretty much it. Derek, can you talk about the million dollar donation you just made? And is this the start of more involvement for you with the community? You know, um, with that donation, I was just trying to make a start, just trying to um, make a difference in in my city. And um, the the program, actually, I saw the beginning and almost the end of it, where I saw when it started off, how kids in the neighborhoods, what um, really didn't take it serious because everybody wanted to be outside at that time. And, like, the, the years went on and Chicago got more dangerous and them programs started to shut down and people stopped funding them and it wasn't nowhere to um for the kid nowhere to go for the kids and I think that that is one of the major reason, reasons that's going on I mean reasons that this is happening in Chicago because kids don't have anywhere to go so I'm um, just trying to start somewhere and just build uh, Derek, um, in this, uh, playing with USA Basketball this summer, you, you, you look fast and you looked athletic. You're playing in these five-minute bursts and on and yeah. off. Do you have any sense or feel about what would be ideal for you during this season as far as how long to play, minutes, how you know rotations, things like that? No, I haven't even talked to anyone about that yet. Not Jen, not Tibbs. Um, I haven't talked to anyone, but as far as minutes, uh, I'm willing to play how many minutes they want me to play. As long as we win the game, I'm fine with it. Derek, could you talk about the depth that you see after the starting five and how that's going to help you guys get to where you want to go? And specific people like Taj, Jimmy, Meritick, AB, Snell. Aaron, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the group that the second group is it might be even dangerous, um, danger, um, dangerous. I would say because you have shooting, you have low post presence, then you got Miracek where he's a stretch four. Um, this is my first time ever playing with a stretch four, or I think AB first time, or Kurt first time ever playing with a stretch four. So I think our, depending on who's in the game, I think that's what the play calls are, are going to be, and that's how Tibbs is going to coach that group. But I think we have a, a really good, a good, a good team. Derek, uh, by the way. A few years back, you said at Media Day, why can't I be MVP? Right now, this version of Derrick Rose, what do you see for yourself? What do you want to be this year going forward? Um, I just want to be healthy. I think that's the only thing that I'm worrying about right now. Um, I could care less about the awards. I could care less um, about any uh, accolades or whatever. I don't care about it. I just want to go out there and win, win games. And if winning games get me to um, – get to any of them awards that's cool but my biggest goal is just winning the championship Derek a lot of people focus on your physical health but after two seasons of injuries becoming a father and always being very invested in Chicago with the violence in the youth how has your mental approach changed or being affected towards the game mentally I think that I'm stronger um, I think that I'm mature more as far as um, being a father and just being a man period um, just having a different interest in my life right now. Things are slowing down. Got my son around me majority of the time. You know, I'm trying to get back to playing again, you know, just trying to get stay healthy. So it's a lot of things that's going on. And mentally, I think that I'll prepare myself for, for this moment and prepare myself for this season. Um, I think that um, I don't get sidetracked by anything like um, I used to in the past when I was younger as far as like going out or going shopping stuff like that just trying to do anything to get as much recovery time as possible that you four years ago when you did win that MVP I mean how far how far away does that seem now does that seem like even far. longer <laughs> yeah it seems far man so far but I know that um seven years I haven't played in two years so I should have two years on the back end for it <laughs>